How's it going everyone? It's Sam. We just saw the largest outflow that we've ever seen from one of the prominent Bitcoin ETFs. We also have a lot of fear in the market, a lot of selling. We have a lot of liquidations, but yet Bitcoin is edging over 60,000. Let's talk about that. Let's also talk about the big thing that is happening later today. I'm talking about like almost all of the traditional markets are watching this. So we'll go through that. If you don't mind, hit subscribe, turn on the bell notification underneath the video so you can see future videos just like this. Also, there's a link underneath the video to Margex where you can start trading cryptocurrency using leverage. You can get this set up in just a few minutes. They don't KYC you, which means they don't take your personal information and you don't need a VPN to use it either. So definitely check this out underneath the video. They're also doing a big, a very big Caspa airdrop right now. And you can start trading to get up to $5,000 in Caspa tokens. Now, to be clear, trading is not right for everyone. Right? If you don't understand it, it's not right for you. But if you want, there are a couple leverage videos on the channel. And typically, once we've fallen down, that is a decent time to put in a long position. Right? If we're at some kind of support. So if you want to check this out, there's a link to it underneath the video. Now, let's start here. IBIT had zero dollars inflows, zero outflows yesterday from their Bitcoin ETF, but we had a large outflow from ARK. Uh, they had 1,717 Bitcoin flowing out of their Bitcoin ETF, which is the largest ever dump from the Kathy Wood Fund. Now let's take a look at this here. We had GBTC with $18.3 million of outflows. We had ARC B with 102. We had BITB with 6.8. Fidelity and IBIT held along with BTCO, EZBC, uh, etc. HODL. But yeah, that is a big outflow day. 127 million after we had nothing but inflows for eight days. Large inflows. Now, why is this? Well, think about who actually holds the majority of these Bitcoin ETFs. It's probably hedge funds, right? There are people like you and me that go and buy these ETFs as well to put in retirement accounts. But the majority of the buying is probably hedge funds, financial institutions. And you know what is today? NVIDIA earnings. So people are probably maybe taking a little bit off the table from risk assets ahead of NVIDIA earnings. Maybe they're gearing up to buy some NVIDIA if they underreport or if they overreport, right? Maybe they want to buy the dip or maybe they want to buy the pump. Now, NVIDIA does have some pretty high expectations. They beat by 10% on EPS last quarter. And even from that beat, from the 61 cents that they earned, they're expected to grow another 5 or 6% just from last quarter. I mean, if we look at October, which is not even a year ago, right? That's, it's four quarters ago. But uh, you can see here, they were expected to earn 34 cents. Now they're expected to earn 64 cents. So yeah, just massive changes over the last year. They're expected to grow uh, exponentially. Now I will say it's slowing down. Their expectations are slowing down a bit, right? So they're expected to just grow 6% from last quarter, but the quarter before that, they're expected to grow 20%. So they are you know, there are lower expectations, but they're still lofty. And the stock's done really well. It's up 15% in the last month, six months, it's up 66% year to date, 166%, one year, 174%. And over the last five years, uh, 3000%. I think I said in a video yesterday, it was 30,000%, but it's 3000%. So you can see why some people are a little bit worried. This is one of the largest stocks in the market with one of the highest expectations. People taking profits does cause uh, some liquidations or people taking some money off uh, out of the crypto market causes some liquidations, $259 million long and $58.5 million short. But the fact is, yes, we fell yesterday to about 58,000, but we bounced right back up to 60, 61,000. Okay, so we are still above 60,000 now, climbing back up after the liquidations. And why is this? Well, there, there are people buying. You can see Mr. 100 buying 315 Bitcoin here today over about three hours. 
Now, other people are obviously buying too. People are probably going long again, setting up new long positions. Maybe some shorts are taking profits. So who knows, right? There are various reasons why uh, the market is edging back up. But the fact is, like I said in last night's video, that kind of emergency video from the road, nothing's really changed. Bitcoin is still, I think, one of the going to be one of the best performing assets over the next year, year and a half, who knows uh, how long we last in this bull run. But the fact is with rates coming down, I, I could go on, you know, you've heard the pitch rates going down, uh, presidential candidates turning more pro crypto with all these big entities buying. The fact is Bitcoin will probably do well, right? But that's where you do have to have your emotions in check, right? If you think this is a massive dump and you're scared, well, you might be a little bit overexposed. You know who also is overexposed? Uh, Rhodium Enterprises. They are filing for Chapter 11 bankruptcy, citing financial troubles and liabilities of up to $100 million. Man, the mining business is very, very cutthroat. Like, if you're not one of the best, you're probably going bankrupt. I feel like, like there are, obviously, there are more than just a couple Bitcoin miners that make money, but the fact is, you have to have cheap electricity. You have to be very efficient. You have to manage risk with the rigs. Um, there's a lot that goes on and you have to be able to know when to upgrade. You have to know when to get debt versus you know, issuing more uh, shares if you're public, etc. So this is just you know one of the companies that will go bankrupt this cycle because they're unprofitable in the mining business. But some of these miners will probably be bought up I don't know what kind of miners these are, but they might be bought up by a stronger, um, more efficient miner with a better balance sheet and be bought up for pennies on the dollar. So it is interesting to watch. Now, as the day goes on, we'll, uh, we'll have to watch NVIDIA earnings. We do have Bitcoin dominance falling down slightly, actually, 57.3, and the DXY moving up slightly, 101.1. We bottomed out at about 101.5, or 100.5. So we'll continue to keep an eye on that. Hopefully, we continue just to move up slowly on Bitcoin, maybe get a little bit of a short squeeze. I know some people are calling for that as well. Let me know your thoughts on this underneath the video, though. Thank you so much for watching. If you do want to check out that link, Marjax underneath the video, you can get in on the Caspa airdrop. And there is a big airdrop, I should have mentioned this too, on CoinW. You can trade and earn up to $15,000 in BTC. Let me actually reload the page. Yep, there we go. $15,000 in BTC if you do $300 million in trading volume. And uh, it scales all the way down. Now, to be clear, if you didn't know, trading volume is the multiple of leverage times the collateral. So you don't actually have to trade $300 million dollars of collateral to be clear and then weeks also has a little giveaway to a louis vuitton and a rolex so if you want to try that out there's a link to it underneath the video as well thank you so much i appreciate it let me know what you think about this last little dip when you look at it here it looks quite small even though people were really worried yesterday you know from 60,000 61,000 to 58,000 pretty small. Uh, obviously, when we were at 64, 65, this is a decent sized dip, a 10% dip. But again, you know, just part of the market cycle. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.